This sport is a lot more than racing for me and winning races. Um, and with Liv, it's so forward moving and um, there's so much we can do for women in this sport in the future and huge things that Liv is already doing and something that I'm just super passionate about and a big reason why I'm in this sport and dedicating so much of my life to it. Being able to represent a company that um, shares my same values and um, goals is huge and it really motivates me to do my best um, as an athlete and racer. Well, welcome to the How We Live podcast. I am joined today by Liz Walker, who is Live Racing Team Manager. It is, you, I never get to see you. You're never in the office, so it's awesome that you're here. It's wonderful to be here. I love my Live and Giant family, um, and I love Live Racing. You have been, uh, you've been with us in one form or another for several years now. You were uh, a field tech rep for several years and now in this new role. Yeah. Absolutely. I started in uh, May of 2015, worked in the field on the East Coast for three and a half years and uh, came back to Giant and live at um, in November of last year, 2019. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's great to have you. Liz, if you've watched any of our live techs, you would have seen uh, Liz in some of those. So she's joining me today so we can talk with Sevilla Blunk, who is I think I can say this safely, the youngest member of the Live Racing team, right? Is that correct? Yeah. You are still in college, right? Mm -hmm. You're yeah. still studying now. Yeah. Where is that? Uh, I'm a junior right now at Fort Lewis College in Durango, Colorado. Are you? That's a pretty good mountain bike team on that at that school. Are you on that team? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, it's an awesome program. It's a big reason why... I chose that school in Durango, um, so yeah, it's a really cool community and great place to train and go to school. So tell us a little bit about because I don't I don't know you. Uh, this is the first time we've had a chance to meet, uh, and 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 maybe folks who are watching this or listening to this haven't had a chance to really get to know you. You grew up in California in Inverness, is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Tell um, us tell us about growing up. Tell us how you got involved in cycling. Yeah. I grew up in a really small town, um, a little bit north of San Francisco, called Inverness, right on the coast, um, on the Point Reyes National Seashore. So I grew up near the ocean. Um, I rode bikes from a pretty young age. I have two older brothers, so that helped kind of with the competitiveness and pushing me. Um, one of them started racing in high school, so that um, is what kind of inspired me to start racing. But it was really NICA. Um, I started racing a lot in high school freshman year um with the NICA program and NorCal League um so yeah that is really what kind of set me off um just racing a lot almost every weekend um just gaining a lot of racing experience and then a little bit later um started doing some pro XCTs went to Sea Otter um wait wait there's that there's got to be a space in there it's um you when did you discover, I like competition? Yeah. You know, this is way cool. <laughs> did you ever race? Have you ever raced at all? I was no good, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's a point where you think, all right, I can give this a try on a on a, on a a pro level. Um, so, you know, how did that happen for yeah. you? Yeah, I think it was really pushed by um, or inspired by my older brothers um, who really pushed me and I always wanted to ride with them and do what they were doing. Um, so that really is what got me on to that kind of competitiveness. And then um, as soon as I started racing more in the high school league, um, seeing really what it was and how it was a lot bigger than um, what I had thought kind of um, is what really inspired me. And um, I had a really great group of girls racing in my category at the time, and they were doing uh, national level races and um, I just wanted to do that. It was kind of, uh, they inspired me too. So yeah. that decision to race, that decision to go pro, um, is that a big decision or is it just for you? Did it just seem like, oh, sure. Yeah, I'll try that. I'll do that. It's definitely a big commitment, I think. Um, but it was always like my goal in the back of my head. Um, when I first start or when I was, when I first started racing, um, I kind of, I just have that competitive spirit and, um, yeah, it was definitely just a, a goal that, you know, 
anything I do, I think in life, um, I want to do it, you know, commit fully to it. So, um, that's kind of how I saw cycling and mountain bike racing. Um, if I was going to do it, I was going to do it to the highest level. So, yeah. You, you've now had a chance to meet everybody with live racing, right? Uh, Liz, as team manager, what do you, what do you try to do with new members as well as established members that we've had for some time? Sure. Um, there's a lot of steps to the process as far as onboarding a new athlete, as well as making sure that our current athletes are up to date on, on knowledge and um, the gear that they need, everything. We want to provide our athletes with everything they need to be successful, um, whether that's knowledge, gear, mechanical support, all of the above. And here at Team Camp, we bring in our athletes to sit in on presentations. We uh, hand out their gear. We get their bikes fit and ready for the season. Many of them, like Sevilla, are doing early season races to shake out the cobwebs, to earn some uh, valuable UCI points. Um, so it's all about coming together as a team, recognizing the support systems that we have for them to take advantage of, and then sending them off to be successful, and then supporting them throughout their journey. What was the first race you did? The first pro race you did, Sevilla? This year? Yeah, well, and ever, when you turned pro. What was your first pro race? Um, I think it was one of the pro XCTs in California. Um, it's got a ben ben Benelli or Fontana. How, and how long ago was that? Um, two years. How, so. how, how did that go, your very first pro race? How did that go? Do you remember? It was, it was intense. Um, the pro ranks are definitely another a big jump from junior and um yeah at, I mean, at that time you're 18 years old right yeah yeah so you're finally riding along some very very talented athletes yeah and uh, you're maybe banging handlebars with them you're trying to overtake them on an xc course yeah so how'd you do on that race um it went pretty well actually i mean I remember that race. It's it's different level. There's you're doing more laps than you've ever done. Um, the competition is obviously com way higher, completely different um, rank. And I just remember being um, really motivated and inspired because I was in this field with all my idols that I looked up to. You know, Emily Batty, Leah Davison, like all these women. Um, who I've been inspired by for years and now I'm racing against them. So it was really exciting for me, um, I think, out of anything. And that's how I, that's kind of the attitude I, I went into it with, which was really positive for me because it took away any, you know, result expectations or anything like that. In addition to handling logistics, and Lord knows there's so many logistics with managing a team, when you have a new rider or any of your riders and, and you've got to pump them up, uh, before an event. How do you do that? It's it's very individual. Uh, we, as a management team, we make sure to connect with each of our athletes at the beginning of the season and, and ask questions about um, what they do to reward themselves when they feel like they've worked really hard, uh, what they need ahead of a race as far as um, do they need someone to pump them up or do they want to be left alone? Are they quiet? What sets them off? Um, how do they best need to be supported? Um, so it's very individual. Uh, for them. And then we make sure to communicate amongst each other as a management staff to um, make sure that we're still providing that support in, in every avenue. What's the best finish you've had so far in your pro career? Um, I won national championships in 2018 in the U23 category. So that was... What is that feeling like when, when that happened? You know, what's when you realize, yep, I'm the one, I'm going to win this race. What's that feeling like? Um, it's feeling of a lot of hard work paying off for sure. Um, yeah. And everything has to come together. So that's where the support of, um, a team like live racing comes because it's not just you. It's every, every aspect of that day from bike mechanics, um, nutrition, everything coming together. So yeah, support, support team behind you. You cross that finish line and, and, and you win the U23 championship and, and who's the, what's, who's the first person you're looking for? Who, who do you want to see first? My parents, yeah. definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, what was their reaction? Maybe that's a better question. Yeah, I think my mom was scared. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Why was she scared? Was she scared you were going to be hurt? Was she scared you were not going to cross first? What? No, I think mostly just the 
getting her aspect. Yeah. Um, there's risk always, but yeah. yeah, both of my parents have been huge um, supporters for my whole life and in my career as a cyclist. So, yeah. You uh, you mentioned joining Live Racing and the support you get from Live Racing on uh, the Live website on, on your profile. Uh, you say a really nice thing. We we ask our athletes questions, a series of questions, and, and what is your biggest cycling achievement? And instead of enumerating that U23 championship, what you wrote is signing with Live. And you said, a company and a team that shares the same values as I do of lifting and supporting women in this sport. That's really nice. Um, talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, this sport is a lot more than racing for me and winning races. Um, and with live, it's so forward moving and, um, there's so much we can do for women in this sport in the future and huge things that live is already doing. And something that I'm just super passionate about and a big reason why I'm in this sport and dedicating so much of my life to it. Um, so yeah, being with being able to represent a company that um, shares my same values and um, goals is huge, and it really motivates me to do my best um, as an athlete and a racer. So, yeah. How does she fit in with the rest of the athletes? Beautifully, um, <laughs> you know, along those same lines, it's a it's a mutually beneficial relationship that we have with our athletes. They need to feel supported by us and 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 likewise we need to know that they have the same beliefs and ideals otherwise it's not natural. And so we when we sign a, an athlete like Sevilla, we know this is a natural fit for her and it's not going to feel on her part like she's struggling to promote products that she doesn't believe in or she's struggling to ride a bike that she doesn't fit well on. Uh, and it, it makes, it makes it much easier and it's, it's a load of stress that, that neither of us have to deal with. You're racing on, uh, you're racing XC on the peak advance two nine. Um, can you, can you talk about that bike when you first got it, the one you're racing now and, uh, you know, what that feeling is like to ride that because live is built by women for women, uh, designed by women. Uh, so what is that, what does that feel like when you get on that bike and pedal? Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, I've never ridden a bike design for women before. And um, I mean, I might be biased, but I've never ridden a better bike before. And um, the moment I got on it, I think like, I just felt like you're, you're so much more on top of the bike and um, just cornering with that lower top tube. Um, you can really like lean into the corners. That's the first thing I noticed. You're a pretty slight rider. I mean, you're a slight build. Uh, you're, you're strong, you're lean, but you're pretty slight. Any problems controlling that big 29-inch wheel? Anything like that at all? No, not at all. I, I've always ridden a 29-inch, and I wouldn't choose anything different. Um, I think you just I, just, I have so much control over it. Um, and with the frame geometry of the peak, um, you really are in control and on top of the bike. So, yeah. It's also a great bike. You don't have to race. I mean, the peak series, you don't have to race that bike. It's also a good bike just to go out and, 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 and ride on a mountain bike ride, whether you're doing, you know, a short haul or you're want to do an all day Epic. Uh, it's a good bike for that. Totally. Yeah. And the first time I read it or wrote it, um, we were in Sedona actually just riding for the weekend. And I mean, definitely not racing or any, um, anything like that, but yeah, we were just riding slick rock and features and trail all day. And it was great uphill. It was great downhill. Um, I felt like I had a lot more travel underneath me than a hundred mils. So it was really cool. It was a fun, fun bike for the day. Your bike of choice. Is that your bike of choice now? You know, absolutely. I, uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to choose whatever bike it is that I want to ride. Uh, and I, I ride the peak two nine. I also ride the intrigue and I first rode the Peak 29 in uh, Grand Junction at the Lunch Loops. And, and like Sedona, there is steep, technical, super rocky terrain. It's also relatively loose in areas. And I thought, oh my gosh, this bike only has 100 millimeters of travel. But truly, the bike rides like a full-size dirt jumper. It is so confident underneath you. Um, I would, I would challenge many riders to find terrain, except for maybe at a bike park where, where the Peak 29 can't perform. 
Uh, what do you do when you're not racing, when you have some downtime? Uh, on, on that same questionnaire, I noticed you like Baking is that a that's a thing? Yeah, I love to bake. Um, what do you What do you bake? What's good? What do you really enjoy baking? Oh, anything new, really. I love exploring new recipes. Um, this spring and winter, especially, my boyfriend and I have been trying new recipes and kind of stepping outside of our box, which has been really fun. Um, so yeah, is this more than just cookies and bread, or is there? Yeah, we've done a lot of dinner, like steaks and. Sa- more savory meals, and then um, I love to bake too, like sweet things. Yeah, that can come in handy on a on the when you have downtime oh, at yeah. a race and you happen oh, yeah. to be there. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Sweet treats, key to my heart. <laughs> um, where do you, you know, where do you see your career going? Um, what is your goal um, in in your career with Live and with Racing XC? Yeah, well, my goal is the Olympics, um, kind of as the pinnacle of the sport. And this year, I'm racing a full World Cup uh, circuit with the support from Liv behind me, which is awesome. Super excited for that. And um, yeah, kind of that World Cup direction um, in the Olympics. And many, many years from now, you're going to not be bike racing. Many, many years from now. Do you have a goal beyond that? Is there like a, you know, an ultimate thing you'd like to do? There isn't really a specific goal. Um, I am getting a degree in school right now, and that's another really important aspect of my life for me um, to have, you know, that kind of uh, something to fall back on. Right. Um, but definitely, I mean, I'm, I would love to keep working with women and girls and young girls in the sport. Um, I'm, I'm a little Bella's ambassador right now, so I would love to do more with that and with live. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't really have a, um, an, a big goal, but yeah. It's been awesome to get to know you today. I always like meeting our athletes again for the first time. I've been here a while at giant, a good long while. And, um, the first chance I have to, to meet some of our athletes and then see them grow over the career is always way cool. And uh, so it'll be great to see your progress this year. What's your next race? We're recording this at team camp in early March. What's your next race coming up? Yeah, we'll be at Bale Lake this weekend for the first part of CT of the season. Liz, always great to see you. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Uh, this has been the How We Live podcast. Patrick Van Horn, Liz Walker, Sevilla Blanc. See you next time.